Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Alex King. Today is Monday. It is June the 17th, 2019 at 8 a.m. New York time. That's 5 a.m. Los Angeles, 1 p.m. London, and 10 p.m. Sydney time. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And sadly, Louis D'Souza can't do this morning's show. He has a family emergency that came up. So we will be finishing off Illusions by Richard Bach next week. Week. Um, that should be a nice conclusion to that book. I don't know if you've ever read that, Alex. It's a cool book. It's, it, it's LOA long before LOA became LOA. Ooh. And, uh, really, really good. It, it, it has a big following, and I don't really know what the overlap is between the law of attraction community and followers of Richard Bach. But, uh-huh. I mean, that book had something like 60, 80 million copies sold. I mean, it was nice. a huge, huge, huge seller. And this is in the 1970s, you know, when that actually meant something. <laughs> 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 but yeah, and it, and it it just lays things out so beautifully. It never uses the phrase "law of attraction." Mm-hmm. Uh, the phrase that phrase did exist. Believe it or not, the words "law of attraction" that phrase date back to the mid 1900s. Wow! Can you believe that? I did not know that. I didn't know it either until about two years ago when uh, David Barkey, who was one of my co-hosts back then, looked it up and found it. I think it dated to like 1859 or 1869 or something like that. So I you mean, were like five. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yes, and I was lit, uh, wearing skins and I was making fire, you know, by rubbing sticks. Together, so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, the, the term has been around for a long time, but it wasn't in use in Richard's book. Um, mm-hmm. What he described the book was called Illusions, um, mm-hmm. a really good book. And basically it, it plays up the idea that everything that exists is an illusion. All these physical realities that we think we have are illusions. And if you're a master of them, you can actually create your own reality. Well, that's law of attraction. Basically. <laughs> yeah. In a that's nutshell. Cool. It's a good story too. It's a, it's a fictional story, kind of like what we're doing oh, with the audience. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So it's not, it's not like somebody preaching at you. Well, this is what you should be doing. It's like here's right. the story of how I was flying a biplane in the Midwest and I met this guy named Donald Shimoda and I mean, it's just, it's cool. It's a great story. <laughs> yeah. Cause those, those books that preach at you, like I, nah. those aren't for me. They get tiring after a while. I mean, there's some good ones. Abraham Hicks preaches at you, but I like listening to them because I learned so much from them. You yeah. know, I just don't want to listen to them all the time. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that's just not how I learn. So I don't, I, t- I immediately turn, tune it out. Right. Can't do it. Well, that's, nobody learns that way. I mean, right. where is most learning taking place? It's taking place in the movies and on the stage and in the various uh, media, like podcasts. And, you know, yeah. Things like yeah. That. <laughs> it's taking place online and all the different forms that of media can show up online. And mm-hmm. people like it, especially when there's a storyline built into it. Especially Which is why no ads. Well, yeah, especially that's even better. <laughs> now we have to say that with a grain of salt because we're creating the grass is greener and the green grass is greener is going to have ads in it. Although there will be a way to opt out of that. Yes. As long as we're giving them an option. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think so. And I was having a conversation with my wife about this over the weekend mm-hmm. um, because I was explaining to her, you know, how this revenue model would work that we would do regular advertising, but we would also, create like a patrons uh, situation through patreon.com um, where people can sponsor the show and basically provide support kind of like the way, you know, the, uh, the rich people of old used to be patrons <laughs> to artists and so forth. Right. <laughs> Only not nearly as expensively you know, so that the average person can be a patron. And so we figure, okay, well, if they are a patron, then they can get the commercial free version of the episodes that we're putting together. So mm-hmm. I explained that to her. She says, well, does anybody else do that? And my reaction was, I don't really know, but my, I would have thought they would have been doing it by now. I mean, to me, this right. is a logical model. This mm-hmm. is a, makes a whole lot of sense because yeah. people are okay with hearing the commercials because they get the, they get the content for free. Right. You know, and other people would want to support it because they love the podcast. And, you know, if they don't have to hear the commercials, they love that. So you're basically feeding two, two different options there. Yeah. It's like paying for live TV or paying, no, watching live TV for free or paying for a DVR. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I pay good money for my DVRs because I hate commercials. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yeah, that little zap button is really helpful. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
And of course, we have great news because we have a cast. We have a cast. We have a cast. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a great cast. I yes. Mean, I was. I don't know about you. I was looking over the list of cast members that we have. Mm-hmm. There's 11 roles that we're filling for the first episode. Right. And. I mean, I was remembering back to their first auditions and then the mm-hmm. callbacks when we brought the ones we bought for a second callback and so forth. Right. And, God, these people are good. Yeah. I yeah. mean, really, really good. <laughs> I far, discovered talent. Far exceeding anything I'd hoped for when we originally, you know, conceived this idea of doing this. I mean, I literally. Oh, not me. I knew, I knew this was happening. Oh, did you? Well, because the did. first time I thought of this, I was thinking, well, can we get our co-hosts to do roles or something? I mean, I, I had no <laughs> idea where we're going to get that kind of acting talent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, oh, my goodness, we've got some great talent coming through. Yeah, piece by piece, we're bringing it together. And we, we I'm not sure if we're quite ready to start going through who the cast members are, but I will tell you um, who we have in mind for Nance. Her name is Chris Pignatelli. And Chris, uh, I think you and I can both agree, has one of the most amazing female voices we have ever heard. Yes, she is a talent, let me tell you. She really is, yeah. I mean, she can do, PJ described it well. She can do things with her voice that most females can't do. Yes, yes. I mean, we males. Our vocal have, range. Yeah. Right. We, we, males have the ability. We can do falsetto. We can do deep. We can do somewhere in between. We can do, we can shift voices around very easily because of the way our vocal cords are constructed. Females right. don't have that much of, as much of an ability to do that. Mm-hmm. Except when their name is Carissa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carissa. Oh, good grief. I mean, and she just does it effortlessly. Yeah, yeah. Right? She could be in the middle of reading a sentence and shift characters like, whoa, what just happened there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's really good. I'm glad we got her. I'm glad we got her, too. She is yeah. fabulous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And quite the personality, too. I mean, she's fun yes. to, to talk to off off camera, so to speak, or off mic. Yeah, life. yeah. Yeah, so this this is going to be good. So anyway, we're we're now that we've named all the cast members and we were – interacting with them we're collecting schedule information and so forth so we can start coordinating for rehearsals and recording times and all that kind of thing yeah so it's getting close it's getting pretty real it's getting real out here <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting exciting too in fact uh, yeah you know, start thinking about while pj's getting ready to do the rehearsals we gotta start thinking about what the second episode is going to be yeah yeah I mean, we've done some outlining right you know, but but we still have to we have to write it. We do, we do. <laughs> I mean, that's the funny thing. Actors have trouble doing you know shows where there's no script. <laughs> I was like, wait, are you talking about improv? Like, what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's I a little I, challenging. <laughs> I, I know they could do improv. I know that really good actors can do great improv. But yeah. you know, when they're expecting a script, they kind of want the script. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like today, we're just gonna wing it, okay? And just whatever happens, happens. <laughs> yeah, I'd do an episode like that one. That would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next you're gonna say we need to do a musical episode, which I'm so not about. <laughs> a musical episode? I hadn't every, thought of that. Every TV show has a musical episode for some god given reason. It's it. You can't go, I would say, more than five years without doing a musical episode, and. It doesn't work for a lot of shows. I don't know why they do it. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I, I'm kind of lost. I don't know why you would do yeah. that. <laughs> they did it on, I mean, there's, they've done it in creative ways, so it doesn't feel like a musical with some of them. Like, uh, the way Supernatural did theirs was they had a case where, you know, ghosts were haunting this play. And the play happened to be about them because a writer had written books about them. So it okay. was, it was all. <laughs> intertwined okay. and it was good but yeah so but they made it out alive without having without the uh, the actual stars having to sing so that was good wow. yeah i mean that, that that's not an easy kind of transition maybe because i grew no. up with, i mean there were a lot of musicals when i was growing up yeah yeah and you know you you, you kind of get the sense that you, you have to write to the music mm-hmm. you can't mm-hmm. really write you know, like you would a, a traditional drama or a melodrama like we're doing or whatever. You just can't do it. Well, let's just ship some, you know, put some music in there and we'll have them sing it. No, it, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. It doesn't. And the yeah, great those are my worst complaints that. about certain shows. Is I was like, okay, right? that, give me that musical episode, though. I could pass, skip it every time. <laughs> mm, yeah, well, I can see that. I, I Honestly, I hadn't been aware that that was a, a thing going on. Yeah, it's but, a thing. <laughs> but, yeah, that... That's a tough sell. 
It yeah, really is. it is. So, it is. Because, I mean, when I look back at the great musicals, I ask myself, how could those have been written if they were originally written as dramas? And I don't think they could have. I'll give you a good example. Uh, Grey's Anatomy did their musical episode, and what they did was they had one of the main characters get into a really bad car accident. So everything that was being sung was, like, in her uh, coma, so to speak. So uh, it was, okay. I was like, okay, all right, I can see what they're trying to do here. And it mm-hmm. was all songs that have already been part of the soundtrack of Grey's Anatomy. So I was like... Right. Kind, kind of, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I'll accept it, but I'll still skip it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it one, sounds, one and done. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it sounds a little bit like um, a book that was written, I think, about 20 years ago by a woman who is a doctor and a medical researcher. Mm-hmm. And her field of expertise was strokes. Mm-hmm. And she had a stroke. Mm-hmm. The book was about her experience as a stroke victim, written oh. from a medical perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, and so when you were describing what you were describing, I thought to myself, that sounds very similar to this. Other, I think it was called Stroke of Insight or something like that. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a good title. And I, I'm pretty sure that's the title of it. I could yeah, be wrong yeah. about that, but yeah, mm-hmm. it, it was a fairly groundbreaking book because I think it was the first time someone had actually written extensively about their own experience with the thing that they've been studying all their lives. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, that's pretty unusual when you think about it. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to ask you, you mentioned that there was a car accident. Did that, like, cue any ideas in your head for our episode? <laughs> um, let me think. Yes, it does now. <laughs> it does now, okay. Because <laughs> I can so, come up with ideas on the fly just because I watch so much TV. So I'm like, all right, how can we fit this in? Yes, we can do this. Yes. So, so spoiler alert, yes, there is something to do with a car crash in the first episode. <laughs> I'm not going to say in the first episode. Oh, well, yeah, you're right. You're right. There is. Yeah. <laughs> there is. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. more intensely. I'm not going to spoil anything now. <laughs> you know, that's my job, but you know. <laughs> that's right. You did. You're the one who's supposed to be doing this, not me. Come on. <laughs> isn't that, I would isn't never that the, spoil uh, my own show, though. <laughs> isn't that the subtitle of this? Your Daily Dose of Happy Spoiler Alert by Alex King. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like spoiler alert to life. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. <laughs> spoiler alert, not everyone's your friend. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> You just ruined my whole week. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh, God. Well, actually, I think it kind of ties into what you had in mind for a topic today, now that I uh-huh. think about it. <laughs> Agreed. So give us a clue. We'll talk. Oh, actually, I should also do the promos first. Let me do yes, the promos yes, before promos. you get to the topic. Okay. okay. So first and foremost, are you a subscriber to the podcast? If not, why not? Really easy to do. Just go to the homepage of our website, LOAToday.net, and you will find right there at the top of the page instructions on how to become a subscriber using your particular computing device. Just walk through the steps. It just walks you right through it. And when you're done, all of our episodes come streaming right to your device every single time we publish them. And, oh, by the way, if you're also interested in seeing us as we are talking about all these things we talk about on LOA today, mm-hmm. check us out on YouTube because we're now live streaming on YouTube. And uh, you can also – why don't you tell people how to subscribe and also how to get notified because that notification is really critical, especially if you want to listen to the live stream. Tell you what you're going to do. <laughs> so what you're going to do is <laughs> – you're going to go to YouTube, search uh, LOA Today podcast videos, and once you've done that, hit the subscribe button, and next to the subscribe button, there's a little bell that will notify you every time that we go live. There it is. Very simple. So subscribe and share. We love to have you. It's part of our growing community, and it is growing. It's, I mean, it's growing very fast. Yeah, it, I'm, it's like this is cool. We, we've had a growth spurt before. We had like about a year ago, we had a really nice growth spurt, and then just kind of leveled off for a bit. We're on another mm-hmm. growth spurt. I like it. This is because I'm here. That's got to be it. <laughs> that, well, it, it's either that or the ears. I don't know which. It is. Because the it headphone ears are great. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're fabulous. So. <laughs> Oh, and the other reason you want to make sure that you're subscribed is you get all the alerts about when we're going to be releasing The Grass is Greener. Oh, and also you can um, go like our 
page for, for the grass is green. Is it a page or is it a group? No, it's a page. Oh, we have a page on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Once we get the audience up, I think we'll create a group. So, you know, like a discussion group so people can discuss the episodes amongst themselves. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Well, you want to take it on as, uh, you know, creating the group and, and getting that started just so we have the, the template in place, so to speak. And then as people come in, we can guide them to the group. Um, I'm going to wait a little bit. Maybe episode three, and then I'll and then I'll do it. But yeah, because it's a matter of like clicking two buttons. So. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll I'll defer to the social media queen. I mean, you know I better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and please. <laughs> so tell us what kind of a topic we have today. As usual, you came up with an interesting one that we had. I don't think we've really actually gone after this one before. So tell us about. No, it. we always do the opposite. Because we are, we're so used to, um, taking negatives and making them into positives. Mm-hmm. We want to figure out stuff for, you know, for ourselves and asking for a friend and such. So today I wanted to talk about apologizing because we mm-hmm. always talk about, uh, having toxic people in your lives, um, what to do with that situation, uh, people fixers. We've talked about that. And now we should talk about what to do if you're the toxic person. Like what, what responsibilities do you have? Oh, well, none of our listeners are toxic. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are a little salty. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, you season to taste. But <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a fine line between being a hot cup of tea and and being toxic. So. <laughs> That's true. This yeah. is true. <laughs> yeah. And then the fine line is one leaves you alive. <laughs> mm, <that's>. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it is a problem that often gets overlooked. Very often, uh, well, not so much I think with deliberate creators. Deliberate creators learn. It's just part of of what's involved in learning how to become a deliberate creator. You learn how to be more in touch with what you're feeling and connecting with it and interacting with it on a regular basis. So it's probably going to be a little bit easier on average for someone who is pursuing this. To be, uh, no, somebody who can apologize. You're shaking your head no. You're just I'm shaking my head no because right not all of us are built the same. <laughs> I'm going to assert my claim anyway. But <laughs> you do that. You, you, you do vouch that. for yes. you vouch for the neurotypicals. I'll vouch for the neurodiverse. <laughs> okay, all right, that's fair enough. Yeah, well, well I, I think that it's at least easier for somebody because they're already connected. When you're connected, I think it's easier to say, you know what, I kind of screwed up there. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that, you, that it's easy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's yes. easy. I'm saying it's easier. Facts. Okay. Yeah. So I think we can find some to- some common ground there. But uh, yeah, I mean, first of all, I think it's about recognizing that you have something to apologize for. Yes, yes. that is the first step. Because without and, that, there's no point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because if you don't feel like you're you should be sorry, then where is this going to go? It's not going to go anywhere. I actually, I told you about this before the show. I actually had an opportunity before the show. I was looking at Facebook quickly and mm-hmm. saw that I had received a contact from someone about three or four weeks ago expressing interest in playing Miguel in mm-hmm. The Grass is Greener, and I never saw it. Yeah. I mean, thank you, Facebook. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you think you could hide that any better than you did? <laughs> I mean, it was hiding in plain sight, so. But it was. I mean, it wasn't even coming up on my notifications. Yeah. The, you know, the only reason I found that is because mm-hmm. I was reaching out to a couple people who are uh, past co-hosts, asking mm-hmm. them if they wanted to advertise their services on The Grass is Greener. Right. And in the process of doing that, I had to go over to the full Messenger screen, and that's where I finally saw the note. Now, I don't normally do a lot of Messenger work. Right, right. I'm over there like, you know, and, and anything that does come through is just coming through right on my, my Facebook, so I just do it right there. I never actually go to Messenger. Mm. Well, that's a that's a faux pas. I mean, they're basically assuming I'm spending all my time on Messenger. What if I'm not? Well, see, that's the, that's the problem with the old school crowd because everybody else has Messenger attached to their phone, so you get your messages instantly. Well, well I, I had it attached to my phone, and I still didn't get it. I don't know, y'all. <laughs> But wait, was it sent to you or was it sent to sent to the LOA Today page? It was sent personally to me. Oh, well, I don't know. Facebook messed up then. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I had to apologize to this poor guy who yeah. has a fabulous voice, by the way. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy does books on Audible. That's how good he is. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
really, really good voice. And mm -hmm. it would have been an interesting choice for Miguel. Um, mm -hmm. we were already filled the role, obviously. Um, yes. so I, I did apologize to him and said, I, I'm really sorry. I don't know why I never got this notification, but, um, I did promise him that I wanted to create a, a separate role of a friend for Miguel so that we can bring this guy on because he really yeah. does an audition. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, and, I think that's one of the keys to an apology is first that it should be heartfelt. And second of all, you try to find a way to make it better. Cause that's what I wanted I to mean, do. With this guy. Does he need to be Miguel's friend or can we make him like Nance's end game? Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying if she's planning on healing, eventually she's going to find her way. This is true. You know, this is true. well, it would be kind of ironic if her end game was, you know, somebody that was a friend of Miguel's. Ooh, touche. That, 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 that can be a little messy. That can be a little messy. Well, come no, on. Everything messy. we're writing here is a little messy. Let's well, be that, I, mean, I mean, for Nance, you know, like, that's, that's just messy in general. Like, you, you, mm -mm. you don't take your ex's friends. Well, it depends on how the relationship with the ex is. That's well. the key. And, and very often, you're right, very often those relationships aren't so hot. <laughs> I could never date one of my ex's friends. I could, just like I could ne never date one of my friend's exes. It goes both ways. I, could, I couldn't do it. <laughs> okay. Well, then that's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for making that clear. We appreciate it. I mean, that's just... Uh, and you just broke 500 hearts out there. You realize that. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> After I just put an ad out on my Facebook page saying how single I am and I'm looking for, for my friend's recommendations. Really? I did. I was like, listen, guys, <laughs> let's kick it old school. Let's do friends of friends. You know, introduce me to somebody. Um, yeah, cause, cause this whole, this whole, uh, dating app thing is not working out. <laughs> well, it worked for me to do that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what that's what gave me the idea. It's like, let's do it old school. Like, yeah. you know, it yeah. worked great. Tell and a friend to tell a friend. Media. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even have a Facebook. Facebook didn't exist yet. Well, yeah, well, that's how I keep in contact with my friends. So I was like, listen, guys, and I was like, I tagged like a hundred people. I was like, listen, <laughs> in case you didn't see this, I'm talking to you. I know you have cute friends. I'm talking to you. <laughs> So the criteria list is starting to come out now. Cute friends. That's, that's, that's one of the items on your list. It's gotta be somebody well, who's cute. Well, I want them, my idea was that if they're friends of my friends, they're vetted. Like, ah. then, you know, then you know that they're not a catfish. They're, they're not married. Like, I, you know, I know the background story. Oh, okay. I, I need, I need another translation now. They're not a catfish. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Hashtag catfish. <laughs> yes, Alex does all of our cat hashtags whenever she's on the show. She always does. This is fantastic. Okay, so a catfish is it? It was it was a social media created because um, people like to create fake profiles, pretend to be somebody else. Boy, and, that's the truth. And try to you know get into relationships with other people, and they end up talking to them. There's a whole show about it. They end up talking to them for. Sometimes months, sometimes years, without ever ever making promises of meeting, never video chatting. So you have no idea who this person really is. <clears throat> and the idea came from originally there was this guy, his name was Neve Shulman, and he got catfished by this woman. So he decided to do a documentary on basically finding out who this woman was and what her reasoning behind it was. And then it turned into a show on MTV where he does it every week. He helps oh other people, you know, they're like, oh, I've been talking to this person for, I don't know, two years, and I've never met them, and I need to know who they are and what's going on and where this is going to go. And most of the time, and this is why the show is so enjoyable, <laughs> is the person is nothing like what they said they were. Uh -huh. It could be uh, the most famous episode was this guy who got um, catfished by his own cousin, his female cousin. He was a gay guy dating dating a man, and he thought he was talking to. He was talking to him on the phone and, and everything. So the, they, get to, they get an address. They go to this address, and there's nothing there. So it's him, the cousin, and the two guys from Catfish. And they're like, what's going on? So finally the female cousin goes, 
You know why you don't know where Anthony is? Because I'm Anthony. What? <laughs> so we, he was like, why would you do that? And she was like, you should have never called me a fat ass Kelly Price. She was mad for that long. <laughs> And she was that petty that she catfished him for two, no, four years, four years. <laughs> oh, my God. And then at the end, they were like, speaking of vocal range, at the end, they were like, how did you get, who did you get to talk on the phone with him? And she was like, no, that was me. I do, I do a, a deep Anthony voice. And she did really? the voice. And it sounded like a dude. I was like, whoa, what is going on? <laughs> wow. It was great. Yeah. So every episode's like that. Some episodes are really nice, and couples actually are who they say they are, and they end up meeting and falling in love and getting married and all that stuff. But yeah, most of it is is petty tragedies, and I, and that's why I love it. So so let me go back to the theme of our show, which is apologizing. <laughs> Did she apologize? Eventually, like they always go back, like after you know three months or six months, they go back and see how they're doing, and you know they still weren't talking. Like the two cousins still weren't talking, and then like they did a reunion show like a year later, and they were back talking. So she, excuse me, did eventually apologize, but yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of apologizing on that show. <laughs> yeah, I can see why there might be a need for it. Yeah, uh, and it's always the same thing. It's always. I'm sorry, I'm not who I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't look like my pictures, but everything I told you is true, everything, and then they're like, well, does your mom have cancer? No. Uh, did, did your cousin die in a car accident? No. Okay, so everything you didn't say was not true. <laughs> so, so I'm going to take a little bit of a leap of logic here and mm-hmm. point out, and, and I'm going to point to a very famous person, but it isn't just about the famous person, it could be a okay. lot of things. Yeah. This is how you end up with a Donald Trump as president. Factual. <laughs> right? Actual you keep putting factual. out there, I am going to deceive people, I'm going to deceive people, and you get somebody who deceives people. What a yes. shock. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, this is not a difficult math problem, folks. No, no. <laughs> So you got to be really careful about what it is you're going to put out there. And, mm-hmm. and more than that, you got to know your friends or in this yes. case, your relations. Well, that's the thing about the Internet. Anybody could be anybody. The Internet, yes, but he presumably knew who his cousin was. And he, well, he knew who his cousin was, but he didn't he didn't know he he didn't know she was mad. First of all, he didn't know she was mad for four years. He didn't know that she had this much petty in her to do this. <laughs> And that's why it was so great. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be laughing at people's tragedies, but it's funny. <laughs> People do it all the time. That's what you're yeah. going for. <laughs> oh, that's how they make money now, because every reality show is about laughing at people's tragedies. It was one of the reasons why I created LOA Today. Yeah. I mean, because there was so much out there, you had to counteract it. I, I needed something to you know, feed my soul after turning off all of those television programs I couldn't stomach anymore. I know. Like, what do you watch? Like, there's nothing left. There's not a whole lot. I mean, you do a lot of DVR. That's about all I can say. You just, yeah, you know, yeah. You're playing the same program over and over again because that one's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And then here we are creating The Grass is Greener, which is uh, fairly melodramatic. Mm-hmm. It's got some... Fairly messed up stuff going on. But that's life. That's what life is. So we got to, you know, bring it to the light. Well, you have to have that as a starting point. I think life is about growth, and that's what we're really focusing oh, yes. on. Well, that's the main point of this of this show is right. growth. Yeah. It, because any kind of show, television, movies, mm-hmm. um, radio, old-time radio, any kind of show is more interesting when the characters grow, I think. We've talked about that before. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Because that kind of, it's almost like providing role models, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You know, how do you grow when, if you're up, you know, people post all the time about stuff they're stuck on, right? Yeah. Not mm-hmm. just a lot of traffic groups, all over the place. They're stuck on all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? And they aren't quite sure how to grow out of it. In yeah. some cases, they don't want to grow out of it. <laughs> yeah, they're comfortable. They're complacent. That's right. Yeah. Well, if you've got a role model showing you how to grow out of something, now at least the option's available. You don't have to choose exactly. to grow out of it. You can stay stuck if you want to. Yeah. You know, but at least now you, you have an idea of how to get out of this, which mm-hmm. is critical. I mean, consider how many people grow up in dysfunctional families, and they don't know 
because they don't have a role model how to do something differently. That That's really what goes on with our main character. Yes. Our main character grew up in a dysfunctional family, and she didn't know how to behave differently to get her to avoid the kind of situations that we get her in. I had a friend who made a post yesterday about Father's Day and about how toxic it is to, you know, um, create this fantasy for your child when the father is not around and doesn't want to be around. Mm. And, and, and she's like, you know, it started with, with my grandmother. She chose wrong. My mother chose wrong. I chose wrong. And it's a, it's a toxic thing going down the generations and someone's got to stop the cycle because it's like, mm-hmm. I, she's like, I remember being a kid and wanting my biological father to be around and people were making excuses for him. They're like, well, mm-hmm. He loves you. You just know that. Or if he could be here, he would, or, you know, excuses like that, which makes it seem like, oh, you know, there's a chance he wants to be around. But that's not that's not the actual case. Like, be honest with your kids. Yeah, well, there's also the, the unintended side effect of that, which is when you frame it that way, you subconsciously send the message. If you're not getting that kind of reaction, it's your fault. Yes. Yes, and that's what you grow up with, and that's why she's such a mess in relationships now right. because of all that toxicity that was mm-hmm. going on. Yeah, not that we don't attract stuff. We do attract stuff, yeah. but, but we also create – everything that we put out there comes back to us, but it can have impact on somebody else who's on the same vibrational wavelength. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. that, that's why we come here to interact. And that's another thing about toxicity is you may not even know you're being toxic by – you think you're helping people. You know, by sugarcoating things, and and that's a, a, a part of to- being toxic too. Is like you got to mm. tell the truth. Yeah, and telling the truth that that's also kind of a slippery thing because mm-hmm. it can mean different things to different people. But I think what yeah. we're talking about here, the truth we're referring to, is the truth of what you're really feeling, of what yes. your real yes. vibration is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to being true to yourself. Are you yes. true, are you honest with yourself about what you're feeling? If you're sugarcoating mm-hmm. something, it most likely means you don't like it, and you're not feeling good about it, but you're trying to pretend that you do. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I don't, yeah. I don't like stuff like that. Well, it doesn't work very well. No. There are a lot of people who try to do that, and they say, well, I'm positive all the time. And then you ask them, okay, so how do you feel deep down? Well, not so good. Well, then you're yeah. contradicting yourself, aren't you? Exactly. <laughs> And you're probably making yourself not feel good because you have to, and I can, I speak from experience is when I went through my depression, like I had to put a mask on, I had to put my face on and pretend I was okay when, you know, I was going through the hardest times and I was like, Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here in front of people and I'm smiling and I'm laughing, but to be all the way honest, I want to be curled up in my bed Mm -hmm. (laughs) with my pillow and just crying. And that's all I want to do. Which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and that is something that you, sometimes you just have to give that mask up. Sometimes you just have to block. Yeah. Because it's, it's it's a defense mechanism. It's a way of protecting yourself while you're trying to recover, while you're trying to heal. Yeah, but it, it becomes an unhealthy habit. That's because you never you never get to the healing part because you're you're putting on the persona that you're fine. Right. And then when you go and you know off the deep end and end up uh, hospitalized or whatever, and your friends are like, whoa. What happened? You never said anything, you know, stuff like that. And it's, it's asking for help is a big thing. Like mm-hmm. you have to, it doesn't matter if you're comfortable, it, but if you need help, you should ask, you should ask for help. There's plenty of ways out there. Like people, you know, repost all the time. Like if you need the suicide hotline or if you need right. PTSD help or whatever, you know, there are hotlines. They even have text messaging now in case you don't want to talk to a person. Cause not everybody is good with talking to people. So now you can text the suicide hotline and and work it out that way, but always ask for help. All this leads me to a thought that probably wasn't it what you had in mind when you came up with the topic, but it seems probably to not. me that fits beautifully. <laughs> and I, I want to ask you if you've ever done this. I've actually done this on like one or two occasions, but it's not something I've done a lot, and I don't think most people do this at all. Mm-hmm. Have you ever apologized to yourself? I know I don't apologize to myself, but I do say it's okay. Okay. So I feel like that's a form of apologizing. Like mm-hmm. just letting your know, you know, yourself know, like it's okay. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. You know? I think that it, it can be useful to actually say the words, I'm sorry to yourself. I also think it's important to follow up with what you want to feel instead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I say that not just to point out what I think is a better way to 
to deal with stuff like this where you kind of trip yourself up mm-hmm. and you need to get, you need to, to release it a little bit. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's where the initial idea of the apology comes from. But mm-hmm. it's also about identifying what you want instead saying, you know what? I am making a pact with myself. I'm not going to go there anymore. And the reason I think that's important, first of all, it helps you. It helps yeah. you get into a better place. Secondly, mm-hmm. it, it provides a pattern for a different way to apologize to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. with, with the guy who, I, I, I don't know why I was apologizing. Facebook should apologize to me. But, <laughs> but I, no, I apologized to the guy because I did miss his message. And yeah. I tried to make it up for him. Yeah. No, so I apologized. I'm sorry that I missed it. And by the way, here's the way I want to try to make up for it. Right. Here's how I, I, I want to, I would feel better if I can in some way create a role for you. So that's what I offered to him. I right. offered somehow to create a role to mm-hmm. make up for the fact that I missed it when he was trying to apply to be a cast member. Yeah. yeah. Now, was that a major hurt? That I did, did to him? Probably not. I mean, you know, you, you, especially if you're an actor, you put up with it. Yeah. It's just part of it, you know. But by the same token, I think it's the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know? I agree. And the more that we spend time trying to heal ourselves through forgiving ourselves, because that's the other side of apology, the other side is forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> forgiving ourselves for having screwed up. It also makes it easier to forgive somebody else when they screw up toward us. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it makes it easier to um, apologize to somebody else and follow up with a way that will help smooth things over. It, it, it basically it gets our mind into a different track because so often whenever we're dealing with something that was unpleasant or, or a hurt or something like that, we stay stuck in the hurt. Mm-hmm. Even I with agree. the apology, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody will say, I apologize. And the other person says, oh, okay, thank you. And deep down they're saying, yeah, they're full of crap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there was not no actual gain, it. right? Yeah. There was no actual improvement there. Yeah. It was all on the surface. And there's also the side of, the person who keeps apologizing over and over again for the same thing. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I accepted your apology the first time, but because you did it again and a third time, I'm not really feeling like you're sorry. <laughs> Cause you keep doing it. So yeah, like, who are you trying to convince here? You, you or me? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like who are you really talking to? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sorry. It'll never happen again, but it does. So if you're one of those people who apologizes over and over again, you're a good candidate for apologizing in the mirror. Mm. Right? Yes. Because really, you're, you're trying to forgive yourself. Yes. And try to make yourself better so you won't repeat the same mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe start there. That's yeah. the way to do that. Mm-hmm. This apologizing thing is actually more complex than we give it credit for. Facts. Right? If it was easy, everybody would just do it and get over things. <laughs> My bad. Okay, let's go out to eat. <laughs> I brought snacks. <laughs> well, you just brought something else up. My bad. That That's a phrase that's been around for a few years now. Yeah. And I always got the impression, you tell me if you think differently, I always got the impression that that was pretty surface. Mm, it can be. But I feel like that's the starting point. I feel like that's the beginning of the conversation. Like, it's like somebody will say, okay, this is how you hurt me. And you say, my bad. I didn't mean to, you know what I mean? It's, it's the beginning. Like you don't okay. just say my bad and keep it moving. Cause then you don't really care. Well, that's <laughs> what I, most of the time that I ever heard somebody use the phrase, that's the way they used it. Yeah, exactly. Like, let's, let's get off this topic as soon as humanly possible. <laughs> exactly. No, you got to follow up with a real apology. Like I didn't mean to make you feel this way, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that apology, boy, this apology stuff is complicated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you get the the bat, the the half butt apologies. <laughs> <laughs> so what you get, what you're talking about is the apologizing, apologize. Like I'm apologizing for the sake of apologizing, but I'm not really apologizing. In a way, but it's more of like. I'm apologizing to make you feel better, but I couldn't care less. That's almost worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really is. It's like, like, yeah. I'm pretending that I give a crap, but I don't give a crap. It's like when someone <laughs> says to you, well, I'm sorry you felt that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And we both know what that refers to. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that happens a lot. It does. Because people think people that's a real that. apology. And it's like, no, that's a half-ass apology. Like, you forced it. 
Yes, I, I, I'm sorry that you didn't like this terrible thing that I said. Yeah, I'm sorry you took it that it, way. But I'm sorry that you didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> it, it, it. Well, it's actually an interesting line right there. Mm-hmm. Because let's say I'm, I'm going to create a scenario here. Mm-hmm. Let's say you're a parent uh-huh. and you have a two-year-old who has a tantrum. Mm-hmm. And as the parent, you really can't take the tantrum seriously. You know perfectly well this is about the kid trying to, you know, steal some yeah, energy right. or, or get some attention or something along that line. It's right. really not about, you know, how terrible they're being treated or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so you might say something like, well, I'm sorry that you feel that way. Yeah, yeah. You know, are you really apologizing for whatever the, no. the hurt is, you know? <laughs> is that a bad thing that you're not apologizing for that? No, because it's not you. It's it's. It's the how the, it's how they're feeling. It's, so that's what I'm oh, saying. The line yeah. here is a little bit fuzzy. It's like when when is it crossing the line? When is it appropriate not to cross the line? It's not quite clear the way we're framing it yet. I mean, if you actually feel like you did something wrong, then don't use the half ass apology. There you go. Make yeah. it legitimate. But here's the question. Is it appropriate ever to do the half assed apology? I mean, yes, you say, I don't feel like I am responsible for your harm, for, for, for you feeling hurt. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Abraham teaches us that we're really never responsible for the other person feeling hurt. They're the ones who, I mean, we are all in control of how we're going to feel about any given situation. They're the ones True. who are responsible. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this creates a, this is another fuzzy area that, that creates confusion, particularly mm-hmm. among Abraham followers. Well, mm-hmm. does this mean that you really can't hurt someone else's feelings, that they can only choose to feel hurt? And so you just do whatever you want to just, you know, be pissed ass, you know, mean spirited and all that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I feel like that is toxic and messy. Like, you can't live your life like that. Well, it's Donald Trump, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But I I think the point that they're making is the vibrational response is yours. Mm -hmm. The vibrational output is theirs. And this is what I try to keep in mind where somebody like a Donald Trump or anybody, I'm I'm picking on Donald Trump because he's the president, but anybody who engages in this kind of behavior, um, somebody who puts out stuff like that, Mm -hmm. the perception that others have is that, well, they do it with impunity. Mm. But that's not the reality. Yeah, sometimes yeah. they just don't know any better. Well, more than that, it's not like there's there's impunity. It's not like they never pay a price for it. Mm-hmm. They're constantly paying a price for it. Yes. You may not see them paying the price. And that's but what you got to consider. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the, I, I often, I, this is something I agree with Abraham about. I think we're much too litigious. I think we're, we're too concerned with, with laws and, and rules designed to deal with the fact that I'm afraid about such and such. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that we shouldn't have any uh, laws in place at all. I'm just simply saying we place too much emphasis on them mm. because the idea then becomes, well, I have to put, or we have to put something in place to prevent people who I'm afraid of from doing the things that I'm afraid of. Yeah. But it's like, not everybody's afraid of the same thing. Number one, number two, it's like, who says, Who's in charge of what now? Because like everybody's like, well, if we're gonna make a law for this. We gotta make a law for that. And then there's then there's both sides to each to each um story. So it's like, mm-hmm. so we're just all arg- end up arguing on the news. It, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not arguing on the news. That's really bad. <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Some people live for that. I hello. <laughs> <laughs> People like Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he loves the fact that, you know, it's something like, I, I don't know what the numbers are, 80 million people hang on his every tweet. That's because he, <laughs> he's an irresponsible tweeter. That's why. <laughs> so, so what does that make the people who are following him? Just as messy as us because those are the same, those are my people. Those are my same people that are watching reality shows. Like, <laughs> We're all waiting, waiting for the crash and burn because we want to see it go down. <laughs> well, some of them are also people who really like him. They really like what well, he's doing. Well, that too. That's that's the other half. Yeah, yeah. more yeah. than half, probably like you know, probably. Yeah. yeah, they're like, yes, I really agree with this. And then among the crash and burners, there are the people who are watching for the tweet so they can write about it and really, really smash Donald Trump. Trolls. 
you know? Yeah. Well, actually, we also call them journalists, but nevertheless, it's the same thing. <laughs> journalists are trolls. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they were the original trolls. That's what happened. <laughs> Well, I guess we're never going to get the grass is greener on any of the major uh, publications after that one. But. <laughs> <laughs> or either that, just, we better be prepared for those really negative reviews to come through. <laughs> I was going to write a positive view, review about the grass is greener, but then when I heard what they had to say about journalists, oh, well, that was over. <laughs> That's what happened. Me and, me and my nurse were talking about this the other day. That's what backfired with uh, Brie Larson, who was uh, Captain Marvel. And she's like, you know, the first, um, I'm not gonna say the first female superhero, but in the, in the Marvel universe, she is like major, like most powerful. And she went on a rant and basically a power, a feminism power trip. So all the journalists were like against her because she kept talking crap about journalists. So that brought all the ratings of the, of the movie down. Wow. Because Everybody's like, we can't stand Brie Larson. We don't go see Brie Larson. And and then, like, a couple weeks later, people realize, you know, the real fans, the Marvel fans were like, okay, but it's Captain Marvel, so we have to watch it. And that's when the ratings went back up. But, ooh, Disney and Marvel were mad at Brie for talking all that smack. They actually put her on hush time because <laughs> she kept, she, she was being detrimental to the movie. It was, oh, it was horrible. <laughs> Horrible. Like every every interview after that that happened, she had to go on with other people. Like it wasn't there was very little um uh interviews or, or stuff about Captain Marvel. It immediately went into Endgame, which was like came out a month after. So they were like, Oh thank God, we have something else to talk about because so they put her on with all the other all the other characters that were on Endgame and they were like she is not allowed to do interviews by herself anymore. <laughs> So I take it she's on probation now, then. Listen, Disney and Marvel do not play. Okay, they do not right? play. They do not play. They already. I mean, did you hear about the um, the director of um, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, James Gunn? Dunn, I forget his name. Um, he had said something anti-political on Twitter like 20 years ago, and Disney found out about it and they fired him. Wow. Yeah, just as something he tweeted 20 years ago. And it was like, are you serious? Like, so he apologized and everything. And then, and then all the cast, because the, the third movie is supposed to come out and the cast decided, well, we're not going to do the movie unless you bring him back. Oh. So, and he actually got brought in to do the next Star Wars. So they actually lost him. And then they were like, well, can, you can come back. You can come back. So Disney forgave him and they brought him back and now he's doing, he's doing, going to be doing the third movie because it wouldn't have been the same without him. Like it, the, he made the movie. Like, hello. Look at all the vibrational law of attraction going on there. Yeah. Yeah. What I know, right? Described. I mm-hmm. mean, huge amounts. You know, people mm-hmm. put out, they put out stuff about stuff that they don't like to get back stuff that they don't like, mm-hmm. which encourages other people to put out stuff that they don't like yep. in response to the stuff that was, that, that they didn't like, <laughs> which leads yep. to things that they, results that they don't like. So mm-hmm. one, I don't like leads to another I don't like, which leads it to another I don't like. Which leads, I'm like, holy cow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if there's if anyone ever needed a good reason to focus on what they prefer instead of what they don't prefer, there it is right there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again for the people in the back. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's what we're doing with The Grass is Greener. That's the whole point of the show, to help people yeah. understand. You know, what you put out, you get back. What goes around comes around. Sowing leads to reaping, however you want to phrase it. It doesn't make any difference mm-hmm. how you call it. The grass is greener on the other side. Guess what? <laughs> the grass is going to remain on the other side. It's not yeah, going over yeah. your side. The grass is greener wherever you water it. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. That's, right. That's, that's a good thing to keep in mind, too. Mm-hmm. Maybe, we'll, maybe we'll actually be able to teach Nance that. That'd be good. <laughs> that is the whole point of why I titled the show what I titled the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's going to be good stuff. Mm-hmm. So apologizing. Have we covered everything about apologizing? I think so. <laughs> and to those listeners who are wondering what the heck we're talking about, I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry for the way you heard it. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't do half half. <laughs> no, we don't. I sincerely apologize. <laughs> As I'm laughing and talking to the mic at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess that goes to prove that apologies can be funny. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That is true. It's the basis yeah. for some entertainment, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. we got about 10 minutes left. I'm wondering uh, what else we can talk about with the, with the audio play, with the grass and screener. Because, okay. I mean, the, the good news is that we have this new cast. So yes. maybe we talk about, you know, what to expect for people who are wondering, like, when the, the play is going to come out and, you know, what. Before we do that, I want to um, ask our audience for, you know, participation. So, like, if you go to our Grass is Greener page and you have ideas for where you think you this, this oh, nice. could go, I think you should, you know, slide, slide in our DMs. And give us, give us some ideas of what, what you know, maybe something you've gone through in your life that, that has to do with law of attraction that you think maybe Nance should, uh, have to overcome or whatever. Or not just Nance. I mean, we've got 11 characters. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of characters who I mean, would be having issues. And they already have issues. So it's not like, you know, <laughs> we haven't set the foundation. So. Right, right, right. So yeah, I love that idea. Yeah. That, that's kind of like, um, what do they call that? Uh, there's a phrase for it. it. It's what I would call crowd writing. Mm, okay. You know? Mm-hmm. So you have your, your listeners contributing ideas, script ideas. And well, that happens uh, all the time with movies. Like, they change the, the whole ending to stuff because they're like, you know what? That's, they did that with Game of Thrones. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because all these people kept coming up with with theories, and they were like, you know what? That's a good theory. But let's let's keep that. Let's let's let's, let's go with that one. <laughs> well, I'm not a Game of Thrones fan, but I, don't I recall that the last episode was routinely panned by everybody because it was so bad? Okay, the whole last scene was garbage. I'm so sorry. All right. Well, then we'll <laughs> I apologize, <point>. but <laughs> but yeah, it was um. I mean, I can't. Okay, people are gonna hate me for this because I didn't watch the whole series. I watched three episodes of the first season, was not into the whole thing because it was just too much. I can't deal with people not taking baths, so back that period, <laughs> don't do it for me. And the whole sleeping with your brother and sister, and I just oh my, could, yeah, yeah. I was like the whole incest thing. I was like, okay, changing the channel. So. <laughs> But then I came back in season eight because it was like it's it's making history. Like this is the mm-hmm. end of the end, and I was like, all right, as a avid TV watcher, I feel like it's my duty to watch this season. <laughs> I came in season eight, and I didn't feel like I lost anything by the uh, missing the other seven seasons. So <clears throat> based on that alone, I feel like this is garbage. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, there it was just one bad thing after another. It was like the, this whole build up to this fight against the other side and it lasted an episode. <laughs> and the whole the whole season was only six episodes, eight episodes, something like that. And I was like, oh that sucks for you guys. <laughs> That's not doing it right. Like you have to wrap up this entire series in eight episodes. Like mm, I feel for you. <laughs> Send your hate mail to Alex King and her <laughs> Facebook.com forward slash Alex King. Uh, no, most people agree with me though. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, okay. Yeah. All I know is, all I know is I saw the headlines after the last uh, episodes came out and I mean, everybody was hating it. I was thinking, yes. oh my God, this, how could this thing be so popular? Right. Everybody hated so much. It was, it was just so. Unexpected. They, it was like, really? This is what they did with it? This is how we end this, this point in history? Like, wow. Wow. So do you get the feeling that they did or did not listen to the listener input? They did. Because the thing is, is they, it's, it's based on books and the last book hadn't been written yet. So they base, they mainly took, um, fan theories and tried to create the last season. So, 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 so that means there's a flip side to this crowd writing thing. Oh yeah, it's a I mean, twenty-two. It could, it could like, go either way. You have to be very selective about anything that gets submitted in. So, oh yeah, we're not, we're not going to put everything in there. No, right. So, I get last say. So, we, 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 want, <laughs> <laughs> we want you to give your submissions. Just don't expect that they're necessarily going to get used. Is what I'm exactly, saying. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But we still like the ideas, and, we, and exactly. if we do get a good oh, yeah. idea, get a good yeah. idea, we'll run with it. Oh yeah. 
Exactly. We did that the other day. I had a, I had a dream and then turned into a whole sequence for the second episode. Oh, it is beautiful. <laughs> You know what the best part about that was? I don't mm. want to spoil it, so I won't tell people the details right. of it. But as I'm describing it to you, remember that day I was I was talking with you, and as I'm describing it to you, the idea of, of it becoming a nightmare sequence just came out. I didn't even come as an idea. It came right. out of my mouth. Literally, <laughs> as, as it came to me, it was just going through my mouth, no processing whatsoever. And that's what made it better. Because at first I was like, okay. And then it, you were like, but it's a nightmare. And I was like, oh, yes, love it, love it. Love it. <laughs> PJ has a nightmare. <laughs> yes. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I, I have to admit, we have some interesting things to laugh at. We're laughing about a nightmare on a podcast about happy. Like, okay. Or we're also laughing at people's misfortunes um, on reality shows. So, yeah. you get what you get on here. I mean, <laughs> it, it was, especially with me, it's 100%. Straight shot, no chaser. This is how it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I will say this. If we understand this world that we live in mm-hmm. as being an illusion, and we yes. made this that earlier, yes. and it is an illusion of our own creation mm-hmm. as a what I'll call a source energy community, mm-hmm. we all contribute to this. People who were here in the past were contributing to it. People who are in the non-physical contribute to it. There's contrib- contributions coming from all over the place. And we create this reality that isn't really a reality. The t- reality is much more divine and indifferent to what what's true than what we're experiencing here. But we create this. Yes. Okay? As long as that's the case, then literally this is a playground. Yes. yes. And as a playground, anything goes. Because... Yes. Literally, there's no such thing as permanent death. Mm-hmm. I mean, you 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 will die. I mean, none of us get out of this alive. That's that's the thing yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's in for this is much I do know about Game of Thrones. Nobody get out alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, no, people get out alive. <laughs> Except for the ending, and that's probably the reason why people didn't like the ending. That I think I, I think the fans probably expect everybody to die and have one person yeah. left saying, you know, going doing what uh, Jerry Rubin. You know who Jerry Rubin was? No. Jerry Rubin was one of the original anarchists during the um, the 1960s, 1970s, who was leading student protests and so forth. Now, how would I know who that is? <laughs> I'm not expecting that you would. I'm just simply saying that's who he is. And he was once, he was once interviewed mm-hmm. asking, you know, you're, you're trying to bring the system down. You're, you're anti-establishment. You're, you're, mm-hmm. you're trying to end all the stuff that you're uh, against. What happens if you pull off your, your revolution? You know, yeah, then what? Then, then what happens? And his response was, well, I don't know, man. Maybe we just kind of sit there and groove on the rubble. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so that's why I had to bring Jerry Rubin in, because I thought that's a great answer. You know, that's I a, love it. it. It's probably the most honest answer. I'm going to use that in life. <laughs> in life? Yes. I'm You're just going to on the rebel? <laughs> yes. I'm just going to be like, no, no, man, we're just going to groove on the rebel. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your thought in mind. <laughs> um, I, I will ask you uh, in the last minute that we have left, do you have anything – uh, I know you don't have anything left in terms of what you're podcasting about, spoiler alert, but do you have any spoilers that you want to share with us before we sign off for the day? I do have, um, I will let you know that if you're missing spoiler alert, I do have a group on oh. Facebook called, I just changed the name. It used to be called, um, Alex in Wonderland, t- uh, TV for, for group for TV fanatics, but now it's called spoiler alert for TV fanatics. Okay. And so you can just go to the group and I'm, and I always share all, all the information, uh, you know, character changes, um, show endings, show premieres, all all that stuff. And in my favorite thing to do is um do the um in in the fall is the, it's pilot season. Mm-hmm. So I like to post the videos of uh, well the trailers of all the shows that are gonna premiere oh. in the fall season. Okay. So yeah, so you know what you're getting into, if you're gonna like it, should you put it on your DVR, should you not, you know. 
and and yeah, that's that's my favorite season. <laughs> so, so spoiler alert isn't actually dead. It's just been resurrected on Facebook. That's all. It wasn't resurrected. I would I, I started out with the Facebook group, and then I was like, you know what? I should make this a podcast. Oh, I see. So okay. then I started deviating from the group because I was like, I didn't want to double share, and I wanted more people to listen to the podcast. So I stopped sharing so much on the page, and I was so once I canceled. Oh, once I canceled, spoiler alert, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put it all on the page. Well, good. I'm glad you got back to it because that's, yeah. that's basically the root of where it all came from. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and that good. I have time for. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that takes two seconds. <laughs> Even when writing scripts for The Grass is Greener. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's a good thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for sitting in for Louis today. Uh, no sure problem. I'm always on call. I'm a short order cook. I can be ready at any time. <laughs> you are. And, and I, I rely on you. You're like, you're better than my left arm in that sense. Like you're always I know, right? Off. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you to our live stream listeners. Thank you to our podcast listeners as well. We will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.